and welcome back to another Aspiring Medics YouTube video. In today's video, we're focusing on section two and we'll be looking at eight top tips that help me score in the top percentile of the BMAT. My name's Anthony, I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oxford and I'm the BMAT course lead for the Aspiring Medics. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing we'll be doing is looking at the format of the BMAT exam and some myth busting. But if you wanna skip right past that and get onto the top tips, check out this timestamp to skip a bit further into the video. So first of all, what is the BMAT section two? This section is designed to test you on your maths, biology, chemistry, and physics, all at approximately the GCSE level. The questions will be multiple choice in format and tend to involve short answers or a small calculation. The syllabus of the BMAT section two is provided on the Cambridge Admissions website and it's really worth checking this out to know exactly what content you need to know for section two. So how about timings? Well, BMAT section two involves 27 questions in 30 minutes, giving you about 66 seconds per question. In your practice, it might be worth aiming for around a minute per question to ensure that you are keeping to a rigorous timing schedule throughout section two. Finally, what universities actually use the BMAT? Well, here on the side, you can see a list of all the BMAT universities. Although it's worth noting that every university will use this in a slightly different way. It's worth looking at which medical schools weight the BMAT more heavily and which don't place such a great emphasis on it. This can be found either on the websites of the universities themselves or by looking on the Aspiring Medics website. Now that we've talked a little bit about BMAT section two, let's talk about some common myths surrounding it. The first myth we have is that if you don't study either one of maths, biology, chemistry, or physics at A level, that you won't be able to do well in section two. This myth is entirely not true, simply because the content assessed in the BMAT is only at GCSE level. This means that studying a subject to A level will not necessarily give you much of an advantage. The only thing to consider is the fact that if you have, for example, not done physics to A level, Level, you might be a bit rustier in your knowledge of physics and might need to spend a bit more time revising GCSE physics content. The second myth is that all of the GCSE content that you have covered is sufficient for the BMAT exam. Sadly, not all exam boards at GCSE level cover the same content for each subject. Therefore, the BMAT syllabus is not exactly the same as the GCC syllabus for whatever exam board you might have done. It's very important to look through the syllabus and make sure that you have covered every point that's mentioned, as there might be one or two subjects that you didn't cover in your GCC. The final myth we have is that section two is the only section of the BMAT that you can prepare for. Indeed, BMAT section two is probably closest to the sort of exams that you've done in the past, and therefore the preparation is pretty similar. You will look through the content, revise it, and do practice questions. However, section one and section three also have strategies for preparation and make sure to check out our other videos on these sections to get your top tips. Okay, without further ado, let's get into some top tips. These tips are designed to be easily applied and make a meaningful difference to your score in your practice. My first tip is to have a strict timing cutoff for when to move on from each question. We know that we have about 66 seconds per question in the BMAT and some might take slightly shorter and some might take slightly longer than that. However, it's worth having a number in your mind at which you know that you should really be moving on to the next question. For example, if after 90 seconds you have made not much progress at all in approaching the question, it's really worth moving on and continuing to try and find some easier questions. However, an extension of this tip is to set a different level of timing for each type of question. You might, for example, be very good at maths and know that on average, these questions will only take you 45 seconds. However, you might be a bit more rusty on your chemistry and therefore might give yourself a cutoff of 100 seconds for these questions. Working out which are your stronger and weaker areas allows you to tailor your timings more accurately to the questions to ensure that you maximize your score. It's really worth noting that you don't have to answer every single question in BMAT section two to score a very high score. Tip number two is to not dwell on section one. There will probably be some questions from section one that you're not entirely happy with and you might well be overthinking them. It's really important to use the couple of minutes between section one and section two to clear your mind and try and accept whatever happened in section one. This is probably easier said than done, but it's worth remembering that a poor performance in section one can be more than made up for by a stronger performance in section two. Tip number three is to already have a strategy when you walk into section two. When you do lots of BMAP practice questions, you'll probably notice a trend. You'll be performing better in certain subjects and struggling more with other subjects. Let's say we have a situation 
situation where you are very good at maths and biology questions. If you make a strategy to answer these first, once you have answered all the maths and biology questions, you can then use your leftover time to go back and answer all of the chemistry and physics questions. This means you'll know exactly how long you have left on these questions and are able to distribute your time more wisely. Tip number four is to make a list of the content that you have not covered in your GCSEs. As we mentioned earlier, the GCSE syllabus that you did for your exams might not align perfectly with the BMAT syllabus. It's worth reading through it on the Cambridge Admissions website and making a list of all of the subjects that you have not yet covered. Once you have done this, you can then go ahead and read up on these subjects to make sure that you are prepared to answer any questions on these peripheral subjects. Tip number five is to use past papers to find out what topics come up most commonly in BMAT section two. For example, in physics, a topic that the examiners love is waves and there has been many questions in the recent years on the topic of waves. By identifying these topics you are able to use your revision time a bit more efficiently and focus on high yield subjects that can come up very frequently. Tip number six is to approach calculation and fact-based questions differently. So in BMAT section two there are likely to be a lot of questions which involve calculations. This is likely to be the case especially for chemistry, physics and maths. On the other hand there are also questions which are more fact-based such as how do we define a certain phrase. With these sort of questions, it's quite likely that you'll be able to answer fact-based questions a lot faster than calculations, but this isn't necessarily true. Working out what type of question you spend longer on is a worthwhile investment because it will allow you to plan your time in the section a lot more efficiently. You might also decide that you approach fact-based questions earlier in the exam if you are faster at doing them and leave the calculation questions till later. However, this strategy is entirely up to you. Tip number seven is to practice under timed conditions. A lot of the BMAP practice questions are a available online, as are the past papers, and therefore it might be very tempting to practice them on screen with a calculator in hand. However, it's important to note that the BMAT section 2 is a non-calculator paper, and the exam is usually done on paper for most people, and therefore practicing under these conditions allows you to replicate timings more accurately. Another top tip is to use a wristwatch for timings rather than a stopwatch on your phone. This is because, once again, you will not be able to have your phone in the exam. And my final tip is to not stress about any of the four subjects that you're not doing at A level. We've talked about the fact that there is biology, maths, chemistry and physics covered in section 2 and if you are missing one of these at A level you might be very tempted to spend almost all of your practice time revising this subject. However ultimately the distribution of the four subjects is roughly equal in section 2 and therefore spending disproportionately long on one subject may leave you lacking knowledge in the others. Try and plan your time accordingly and make sure that you spend your practice time wisely. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the BMAT course lead for the aspiring medics and we've recently come up with a brand new BMAT course, all available online with interactive videos ready to prepare you for your BMAT exam. We have expertly made slides with practice questions and content allowing you to prepare for each of the three sections of the BMAT. If you want to give this a go, feel free to check out the link in the description below. I hope to see you there.